You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Just as we started the podcast, President Trump dropped a video message mm. to, well, to the candidates that are running in the Republican primary. And let's just play it. It's really good. And we'll talk about it. This is really, you know, no, no one does things like Trump. Listen to this. Great polls just out. Leading by 40, 50, and even 60 points. Who expected that? I did. Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, all very strong. But also leading Biden very big. The sanctimonious is crashing. Perhaps the party should come together. People should drop out of the race. We unify and we beat Biden and the Democrats. They should be easy to beat because our country has never been in worse condition. That it is right now. Thank you. Okay, so President Trump is saying that the other candidates that are running against him in the primary should drop out. He's right on the money. I, I mean, agree it's, with that. You know, they're running. We've gone through this before. There's there's a few reasons why there are people running. Okay, Ron DeSantis is running for one of the worst reasons of all to get rich. He's running for the same reason Biden got in the politics to get rich to make money. Him and his wife. Okay, Seem, it seems so more and more every day that seems yeah. to be the case. Um, Mike Pence is just a grifter who yeah. is using the campaign to make money. Well, Mike Pence knows after this he's going to go into oblivion like Chris Christie. Yeah. So this is their final cash grab. Yeah. And Chris Christie, you know, we've talked about this. Chris Christie has millions of dollars behind him just so he can have an opportunity in his fantasies to go into a debate and bark at Donald Trump, which isn't going to happen. Right. And some of the ones in between, I don't want to go through everybody, but there's no one running that's credible. There's no one running that has a chance, and there's no one running against President Trump that should be his vice president either. They don't have none of them have enough support to be vice president of the homeowners association in our in our community. Uh, so Trump is right on the money. Now, some things have come out about Ron DeSantis today that we got to talk about for a, co- uh, a couple of reasons. Number, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Number one, we got to talk about it because we're not going to have much longer to talk about Ron DeSantis's presidential campaign because it's all but over. So we, that's, that's one reason. But this other reason is it really shows you that he's not the man, he's not the leader yeah. that we thought he was. I got a call, I don't know, about six months ago from a, a listener I, I think it's it's I think it was D, who's one of our Patreon supporters who we partnered up with the Mighty Maga Lion. MightyMagaLion dot com. I think it was D that called about this. D called me. I'm pretty sure if you're listening, D, I'm pretty sure it was you, and you'll remember more of the details since you saw it. I can I only yeah. have a recollection, but D was was um, saw an interview with a girl who was on a TV set with Ron DeSantis about six months ago. And she was talking about behind the scenes how he was being told what to do every step of the way by his handlers, that he wasn't a, a free-thinking guy, that they were walking him around like like a puppet, like a, I saw like a an actor in a movie having directors. Yes, I saw a video of that. And, you um, saw that video? Yeah, it was at the— um, I think it was I at that fundraiser too. when they were at the hotel, and they went up into their hotel suite. Uh-huh. He had a handler there. It was a blonde woman with a clipboard. And there were like three videos of her telling him where to go, who to talk to. Wow. It, like he's handled more than Biden, it seems. I'm honestly, he seems which, like he's handled more than you Biden. You know, which it shows you that he's a complete moron. He's just an idiot. He's incapable. Well, so something leaked out so today. He seems to be happy to do it. So a memo has leaked out from the Ron DeSantis campaign. It's an internal memo that mm. was not meant. For us to see, uh, although they're trying to present it as if it was leaked out on purpose to help mm-hmm. him, but it, I'd like to know who leaked it's, it. It's it's really it, it, it. I'm so glad this has happened because the betrayal of Ron DeSantis is one of the best things that's happened to the MAGA movement since since you know outside of anything involving Trump personally. And I'll tell yeah. you why: if he would not have blown his cover. And started going after President Trump and running against him and stayed on the MAGA Trump train. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have known what kind of person he is. He would have gotten the nomination in 2028. He would have been 
the president. We would have all supported him. And then after he got in office, we'd have found out what he's really like, which is yeah. a really bad guy. So he did us a favor. This memo, listen to this. Uh, this is in media, which is pretty left wing media. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis's political operation recently posted a trove of documents laying out his campaign strategy. Uh, now, listen to this including how best to handle the field during the upcoming GOP presidential primary debate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is next week. Mm -hmm. The internal memos titled Blunt Advice and Polling Data were first reported on by the New York Times today after journalists with the Times were tipped off to the existence on a website owned by the chief strategist, of the pro-DeSantis never back down super PAC, Jeff Rowe, as in Roe v. Wade. And I'm wondering, this is it. So, so these were memos that were on an internal website that only people inside the PAC and the campaign were supposed to see. And someone leaked this out mm -hmm. to the uh, New York Times. And I have no evidence of this, but I think that there are some MAGA people that are loyal to President Trump that are inside the DeSantis operation. I think that's very typical in political campaigns. And have been leaking stuff out. I think you have people in every campaign that are working for somebody else that, that get secretly. in there yeah. secretly. I, I I don't think that's that unusual on both sides yeah. of the aisle. I yeah. think it's pretty yeah. – like, you know, they're doing like – they're doing like – I don't know what the terminology is, but they're getting intel. And from inside, infiltrating it and then giving it to the yeah. Well, that's fine. The guy there, well, that's who, politics. Who, whoever it is deserves. A, I mean, businesses a, do it too. A, a job with Trump. So anyway, New York yeah. Times reporters reported the documents included four basic must dos for DeSantis, mm. who is referred to in the memo as GRD. That's Governor Ron DeSantis. Okay, and they give four directions to. Governor DeSantis, right? Can you imagine Trump getting directions on an internal memo from no. staffers? I give me a break. No. Trump tells people what to do. One these now these are the four directions that they're giving to Ron DeSantis that he has to do during the debate next week. This okay. is so pathetic. One attack Joe Biden and the media three to five times. <laughs> so what is he got? He has to be told to do this. So yeah. So is he going to make notes Yikes. and then and then draw a little line till he gets to the five? Two. State his positive vision two to three times. Mm -hmm. So he's got to share. So, okay. What he, if he does it four times? That, does, well, does he get in trouble? I don't know. Three, hammer Vivek Ramaswamy in a response. Okay. Four, listen to this one. Defend Donald Trump in response to a Chris Christie attack. Only Chris Christie? Yeah, it said, well, yeah, it says defend Donald Trump. In response to a Chris Christie attack. Okay, so there's a few things going on here. One, it, again, like this thing we, with, we were talking about from a few months ago, it shows what a complete moron Ron DeSantis is, that he has to have underlings tell him what to do pretty detailed in, a, in the script format well, in, just, in, the, in the debate. Against, and the, let me say against that, I don't think it's that he's a moron. I think it's that he's bought and paid for. He doesn't follow the orders because he's stupid. He follows orders because they own his ass. But you know, th they have paid for this guy. He, it, when, when, he has no other choice. When someone reaches this level, okay, most of these politicians are bought and paid for, except Donald Trump. But when they reach that level, they're supposed to be good enough where they don't need this kind of direction. Okay? This, to me, shows but, me how much the deep state owns this guy. Yeah. And he well, does whatever they I, say. I, well, that's true, but it still shows that he's stupid and incapable that they have to give him this kind of direction. You know, I, I, I've never seen anything like this. And I promise you, Bill Clinton, who was bought and paid for by donors, didn't need directions like this when he was running in 1992 because he was already at that level. He's very smart. Um, so that that's one thing it shows you. Yeah. And it it's a mix. And another thing that – it shows you is how dangerous he would be as president of the United States. If he has to be, mm -hmm. if, if he is handled like this yeah. with the debates, he's handled like this on everything, everything, which means he, he like, like Joe Biden, he can, he's not capable of decision-making and that's pretty scary. Let me read the rest of this. Well, it article. also shows that he's not assertive enough no. To Pretty assert bad. himself and take charge. Mm -hmm. So let me read the rest of this. Which this is, is also <clears throat> bad. This is in Mediaite, which again is a hardcore left-wing news outlet. But yeah. they, they do break news. 
So some of the – I haven't read further in the article, so I, I don't know if it's worth reading, and some of it may be phrased for liberal you know, eyes. Right. The memo even goes so far as to offer Ron DeSantis some specific lines. For oh example, boy. Trump isn't here, so let's just leave him alone. He's too weak to defend himself here. We're all running against him. I don't think we want to join forces with someone on this stage who's auditioning for a show on MSNBC. The memo suggests DeSantis say – in response to Chris Christie attacking Trump. So when Chris Christie attacks mm. Trump, they want uh, DeSantis to come back with, "Wow, I don't think we want to join forces with someone on this stage who's auditioning for a show on MSNBC. So they even have his, they, this it's is scripted. Tol- it's scripted. It's scripted. Now, but but don't you think for a lot of these politicians, this is the norm? Or do you, or do you think maybe you're right, he's just stupid? This is not the norm. This is I mean, not the norm. He, you're right. I guess this you're is right. Not at I mean, this level. This really does show. Not at this level. I think it's two things that he is he is controlled because of the money, and I think you're right. Even though he has a Harvard and Yale education, I think he's stupid. The memo well, they all, call him Meatball mm-hmm, Run. Mm-hmm. You know? The well, President Trump. Fitz. Trump. Pre- President Trump has probably known this for a long time. The Incredible. memo also encourages DeSantis to viciously attack Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, the entrepreneur who has been gaining in the polls in re- recent weeks with a pro-Trump message. Take a sledgehammer to Vivek Ramaswamy. Fake Vivek or Vivek the fake, reads the memo. Oh, my. S- suggesting, trying to brand him like Trump. Oh, my yeah, God. Suggesting DeSantis offer a Trump-like insult and nickname for Ramaswamy. That's weak. This is so That's bizarre. That's not even good. This is so pathetic. It, it, the advice he's getting, if it was good advice— I'd be like, okay, he's getting his money worth. This is horrible advice. There's nothing here exciting or no. that's going to turn his campaign mm. around. The report also adds some details as to how the journalists found the memos. Mm. The New York Times was alerted to the existence of the documents by a person not connected to the DeSantis campaign or the Super PAC. Huh. After the Times reached out to never back down for comment today, the group removed from the website a key memo summarizing the strategy for the debate. The memo came down from the website shortly after the New York Times contacted the Super PAC for comment. And there's a big New York Times story about it, but that's I think we got enough of it. So that is... I can't wait for that debate because the world, the nation is going to see how bad Ron DeSantis is in debates. The only thing that would work in his favor is if they all collectively attack Trump, which would be a complete waste of time mm. because he's not there. But what I'm guessing is they're going to go through certain issues, and I think everything's going to circle back to Trump not being there. Well, yeah. Trump should be here. Mm-hmm. They're going to all attack Trump, but that's DeSantis's only saving grace. But if they were smart, yeah. they would go after DeSantis and knock him out. And I think Vivek is going to go after DeSantis. He's not going to go after Trump. Vivek is going to yeah. go after him because mm-hmm. he is leading him in some polls. Mm-hmm. And in other polls, he is right on his tail. Mm-hmm. He is going to go after DeSantis. And let me tell you something. Say what you want about Vivek. I haven't seen him debate, but I have a feeling that he is going to wipe the floor with DeSantis because he's quick with his – he's very quick-witted. Mm-hmm. He's very sharp. He's very good in what he says. And DeSantis flails and looks like a deer in the headlights. You guys haven't mm-hmm. seen this guy. I don't he's ag- awful. I agree that – Ramaswamy may go after DeSantis, oh, yes, but I don't will. think he's as sharp as you think. If you listen to him speak, it's all very generic cookie well, cutter. Well, let's see. I don't know. He 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 debated somebody on this trans thing. The Breakfast Club. Somebody he was, in line, he, and he really did a good job. He, he was on Charlemagne to God show. Let me take back what I just said. Yeah, I mean, he's let pretty me, good. Let me retract what I just yeah. said. Okay. I saw him a few weeks ago on the Charlemagne to God show, the Breakfast Club with all those idiots. Yeah. And— he was debating there, and they were ganging up on him, and he did fillet them. Ron I told you, I'll and, he, and he had yeah. a trans activist come up to him last week in line. It was on Twitter, and what he said totally went over my head. But when I di- dissected it and really listened to what he was saying, I had to yeah. listen to it like three or four times. It was brilliant, and he is very intelligent. I'm telling you, don't don't write him Ron off. Shwami. And he is going to surpass DeSantis. Well, Very that. quickly after these debates, <clears throat> he's not going to surpass Trump, but he will be in second place after these debates, I promise you, because if he's smart, he's going to go after him. He's not going to go after Trump. Well, he's not stupid. This this story on— he'll knock him off the pedestal. This story on DeSantis is 
the most devastating thing to happen to DeSantis since the campaign began. And remember how bad it was with that Twitter spaces disaster when it didn't work. This is worse than that because now we're, you know, that was a long time ago. That's kind of forgot. This is happening next week. And he's been rehearsing these lines. Now he's got to, they got to write new lines. He's got to remember new lines. <laughs> oh my God. And when he says something like if, if I were to interview Ron DeSantis yeah. after the debate, first thing I would do is pull out this story for the New York Times and talk to him about that and then ask him, what did you say tonight on the stage that was scripted out by others? And he would deny it, of course, but those yeah. are the questions I would ask. It would, in it, he's, he, What's happened with Ron DeSantis is not only has he destroyed his career and he is unelectable forever. For sure. And is is that he's become a mockery. I'm going to make this prediction again because it's going to happen. I, I said a few months ago when I, you know, when I when he first started running, I said he's unelectable forever. And when his governorship is over, he's going to be out of a job. And the last thing in, in, in politics and the last thing Ron DeSantis wants to do is – go back to the practice of law. He's not even any use to the Republican establishment, so they're going to be done with him. Yeah. And I made a prediction months ago that no one believes me, and I said what he's going to end up doing is being on the board of directors at Disney, and this is what's going to happen. When he finally jump, jumps out of the race, Ron DeSantis, because he's being humiliated, <clears throat> that's just insane. he's going to come back to Florida to be governor. And the closer we get to the end of his governorship, this is what my prediction was, he'll start backing off Disney and doing things to help Disney. And, and then after he's no longer governor at some point, it wouldn't be the next day. They would probably, you know, have a little period to make it seem like, you know, it was, you know, but they'll, they'll put him on the board of directors as a representative on the board of directors. It's, it sounds nuts. But then a couple days ago, Ron DeSantis gave an interview. Not only did he back off on Disney, mm -hmm. he said he wanted to move on from Disney yep. And he asked Bob Iger, who's the CEO of Disney, to drop their lawsuit and let's just let's just get back to being friends. So he's already Ron DeSantis reaching out to Disney and he complimented Disney. He said he said, I was married at Disney and I and my family, we love Disney. So I, he's yeah, that's what Ron DeSantis will end up doing. He's admitting defeat. Well, yeah. I disagree with you totally. This is what I think is going to happen. I think Vivek will destroy him oh, next God. week in the debate so and, Viv and Vivek that. will will mm. jump ahead into second place and yeah. and, and and that'll be he'll roll with that and Trump. he'll get a big bump. Mm -hmm. Um and I think DeSantis is going to once that happens he's going to fall further and further down the line and he's going to drop out. He soon. will drop out at some point. And then I think what'll happen is he'll quietly go away for a while um back to Florida and he will start, what he'll do is revamp the entire campaign and he's going to start gearing up for 2028. 20, yeah. Um, and he is going to start defending Trump and endorsing Trump and praising Trump because he's going to realize I cannot win without this guy. I cannot win without MAGA. And if I ever want to be president, mm -hmm. I have to start kissing his ass again. And that's what he's going to do. And he's going to hope and pray that people are going to forget that he's a traitor and 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 mm -hmm. that he backstabbed Trump and and bring him back into the fold, which is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. He's unelectable. I think his political Forever. career is over, but I don't think he's going to stop trying after this. I think he plans on running against Newsom in 2028. I think they're both planning it. They're even debating each other already. Yeah, That's not stupid. And he's going to try to revamp. Yeah. The problem is he is not going to get the donations again, like he did this time. Never, ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. He's not independently wealthy. Um, he he's needs, done. The he's thing, done. the reason... I, but not, I don't think he's going to give up the, just the, yet. The reason I I told you guys, I'm talking about the Disney thing, him work, being on the board of directors at Disney. When his term is up as governor, okay, which is like two years away, yeah. is when his term's up as... Two and a half years away is when his term is up. So he just got reelected, right? He just was sworn in in January for his second That's term. Right. So he's got a long time. That's a long time from now. No. And when when he's no longer governor, he's going to be out of work and unemployed, and he needs the salary coming in, and he's not going to have it. Now, I want to tell you guys— He doesn't even have a home. Uh, yeah, well, that's true. I he mean, does, where is he going to live? He doesn't— He doesn't, he doesn't know, have a house. He does—this was amazing. He's got three kids. This was an amazing thing that Laura Loomer uncovered about Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis does not own a car, which is crazy. I mean, where, think How about it seriously. 
he, ha- like you said, has lived in government housing. He has three small children. His wife doesn't work. Is she going to have to go back anchoring the news? He has no house. Mm-hmm. He's going to have nowhere to go when he's done in 2024. He thought he'd just ease right into the White House. They'll put his wife on outnumbered on Fox with McEnany. <laughs> no way. Yeah. They're done. Now, I want to tell you guys about the MyPillow My Slippers. You know, the MyPillow My Slippers, it's amazing to me. I was asking people uh, in the chat room what their favorite MyPillow products were. Oh. And, of course, everything, you know, the three-inch mattress topper, the, the sheets, the pillows, the, the MyPillow 2.0. But a lot of people, more than anything else, I was very surprised at this, said the MyPillow My Slippers. The MyPillow My Slippers, th- this is something I kind of ju- – I realized this yesterday on the podcast when we were talking, Kathy. I'm wearing my MyPillow My Slippers right now. They are so comfortable. Mm-hmm. And when I put my feet in them, when I get home, I feel the stress in my body leaving my body. Yep. And I did not know this. The, the MyPillow My Slippers have four right. layers of comfort and everything. I knew that, but I didn't know that one of the layers was the patented fill that Mike Lindell invented yep. uh, for the MyPillow is one of the four layers. And when you put these my pillow my slippers on, it's like getting a foot massage is what yep. it is at at on both feet <laughs> and instantly and right away. It's they're absolutely amazing. And a lot of older people have issues with their feet too, and it, and it can um, swelling or just um, pain in your feet. You know, when you get older, you have things like this you got to live with and deal with. It, it really does make a difference in your whole body. Mm-hmm. Like I've said, with the pressure points and reflexology and all that, if your feet are really comfortable, you know, that's the first thing you do when you come home is kick off your shoes. And these are great, these slippers, because they have a sole on them and they're not like regular slippers. It's an indoor they, outdoor sole. They actually have a sole that you can wear them when you're going around the house. Brian puts them on when he gets home from work, but on the weekends too, you wear them all day. And when you're in the house or you go out to take out the garbage, or go sweep up the patio or run errands, you keep them on mm-hmm. and, and go around. And, yeah, I do. and it's, it, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So the My Pillow My Slippers, they have styles and colors for both men and women. They're as low as $25 with our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E at mypillow.com. Also, there are a lot of new colors in. Yep. There's also new sizes. There's smaller sizes for women and for children. And That's there's great. And there's also lo- uh, larger sizes and wider sizes for the men, the bigger guys, which was. And those are new because a lot of guys were asking me, oh, I need the wide, wider size. They now have those. So go to MyPillow.com, use our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, and buy your MyPillow My Slippers as low as $25. Step into the exciting world of boxing history with the book, Rivals in the Ring, 15 Greatest Boxing Rivalries of All Time, from author Andrew Dalziel, available on Amazon. In Rivals in the Ring, witness the fierce intensity and emotional drama that define boxing's most legendary rivalries. You'll feel the adrenaline as these titans clashed, both in and out of the ring, leaving nothing but pure passion in their wake. You'll learn about the harsh realities of boxing. Some battles led to life-changing injuries and tragedy losses, reminding us of the sacrifices these warriors made in the name of greatness. When you read Rivals in the Ring, you'll embrace the evolution of boxing as it intersects with medical advancements, ensuring the safety and well-being of today's fighters. This must-read book sheds light on the sport's transformation and its impact on the lives of fighters. Rivals in the Ring uncovers some of boxing's most noble moments over the past 120 years, while also tackling the challenging aspects that test boxing's integrity. What are your copy right now? On Amazon, Rivals in the Ring, 15 Greatest Boxing Rivalries of All Time, from author Andrew Dalziel. Are you searching for exceptional and captivating artwork for your space? Look no further than Canvas Crafts Gallery on Etsy. At Canvas Crafts Gallery, you'll discover an array of astonishing digital art that's available as posters, canvases, acrylic prints, aluminum prints, phone cases, and more. From cat lovers to 80s enthusiasts, science fiction buffs to animal lovers, Canvas Crafts Gallery has something for everyone. Experience the allure of original art that's a perfect fit for your home, office, or anywhere else. Visit Canvas Crafts Gallery on Etsy right now at etsy.com slash shop slash canvas crafts gallery. Browse the collection. You will be impressed. Etsy.com slash shop slash canvas crafts gallery. You'll find great gifts too. Start shopping right now. Etsy.com slash shop slash canvas crafts gallery. 
a new book from author William Thien is now available on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. The Dream Chip. In The Dream Chip, meet David O'Rourke, an intelligence agent turned uploader for the Timelink Corporation, a futuristic technology company. His mission, capture the thoughts and memories of the deceased and store them in the Will of Memories, a protected vault of supercomputers. But there's more to the Timelink Corporation than meets the eye. They're also the creator of the Common Council Software Program, which empowers citizens to have a say in government decisions. This revolutionary system threatens the power of a group known as the Civocrats, who are determined to maintain their control at any cost. As tensions rise, their leader organizes a mob to attack the Timelink Corporation. The fate of the future is hanging in the balance. The Dream Chip takes you on an adventure filled with technology, political intrigue, and the power of human memory. Order your copy right now on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. The Dream Chip from author William Thien and uncover the secrets that lie within. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, so something has been reported about President Trump. This just broke, too. You know, it's crazy that I keep telling people so much news is breaking so fast each and every day. The stories we're talking about so far on the program are stories that have broken since we've been podcasting. The, the fir- everything we talked about in the first segment, th- those stories came out about 60 seconds before uh, we started the podcast. This story that I'm about to get into broke during the break. We, we've not yet gotten to any of no. our show prep. We're always checking during the show, like I've said before, well, these, I'm just, this what's is, happening, just to give you the latest as much as possible. So listen to this. This Now, the Fox News debate is next week, yeah. the, the one without Trump. CNN is reporting that sources close to Trump's campaign. Now, now before I get into what they're saying, in the past, I thought... CNN and the New York Times don't have sources in the Trump campaign. But after that story in the f- mm. first segment about that DeSantis memo was leaked to the New York Times, I think, you know, pr- President Trump is great at so many things. But one of the things he's great at, is, which, which is a lot of fun, is his manipulation of the media. Oh, <laughs> he, knows, yeah. he knows how to get the media to talk about what he wants to talk about. I think President Trump's campaign, maybe even President Trump himself through people, Leaked that DeSantis memo to the New York Times, and I think this story that I'm going to share with you now, I think Trump's people leaked to CNN. Okay? The thing with Trump, because he's a businessman and so successful, he can handle having many balls in the air, and he never drops yes. those balls. That's right. He never drops those balls. He's so, always on top of everything. So CNN is reporting that sources close to the Trump campaign say that President Trump and his advisors are discussing what kind of counter-programming he might do to distract from the Fox News debate in Milwaukee. Trump's ideas reportedly include sitting down with Tucker Carlson uh, and also calling in to different cable news shows. Conversations regarding a potential interview with Tucker Carlson have taken place with Trump's team, but there's no definitive plan for him to do that as of now. Um, and it, it goes on and on uh, with, with things we already know. Now, Whatever President Trump decides to do, I'm going to go with because he he knows these things, especially with the media. But my thought was that he should not do – this is this is what I believe he should do. And this may be what he ends up doing in some way, okay, a variation of this. I don't think he should do an event at the same time. And I the, totally and, agree with you. And, and the reason that – and I don't care what it is. And the reason that is – is because no one's going to carry his other event because all the media hate Trump. CNN, Fox, MSNBC are not in competition with one another. They're working for the same goal, keep Trump out of the White House, okay? So they won't air it. So with whatever he does will be on Newsmax. That'll be the only TV that carry it, basically. And Right side doesn't count, guys, okay, for this. And then the next day after the debate, the ratings will come in that the Fox News debate beat Trump. So Trump lost the debate. So he should not do um, anything up against the debate. And I think he knows that. What what he might end up doing, though, Kathy, this would be interesting. 
he might end up doing what I think would be beautiful, and I would love to see this. Because he's big into ratings, so he knows what I'm talking about. So mm-hmm. I think he, you know, he's not going to go up against the debates. Too risky. I would. I think it'd be very, very cool if he came on after the debate and analyzed it. I think that's a better, really great idea. Wouldn't that be great? With he Tucker has done anybody, things yeah. in the past. He has had events of his own to counter things on TV, and it didn't work out so great because that nobody that's carried. Happened it. a couple times. Yeah. Um. So I agree. That's a bad strategy. And I think people should watch the debates. I really do. I'm encouraging you to watch the debates. I don't like this whole idea of, of, of ignoring things. This is important to watch, not because we're going to elect any of these clowns. Yeah. But I want to see this train wreck of a debate without Trump. It's going to be hilarious oh, a, to see how they, you know, Fox is freaking out. So, and, and hold on. So I yeah. think your idea of, of, I think he should encourage people to watch it. And then I don't know how that would work. He's never really had a panel or anybody sit down. He doesn't have like a media he network do it with type Tucker. of thing. He could do it with Tucker. Just him and Tucker. That, would be, that would be good and have Tucker air it on, 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 Twitter. on Twitter. That on Twitter. would be a great idea. This is exciting. And I, I'd, I'd love to see uh, President Trump do, the, t- do a thing after the debate. You know, it's kind of like, you know, like after the Super Bowl, some show debuts. You want to do it. After the debate, and he and and he could probably make a good mockery of all these uh, pathetic wannabes that are running against him. All right, so I'm looking at Laura Loomer's Twitter, which is always good. She said, "Mark Levin cannot be trusted. He is telling everyone to donate to Jenna Ellis's That's true. Uh, legal defense." That's true. And Jenna Ellis accused Trump of having an affair with Carrie Lake who has called Trump supporters cultists, Mm -hmm. who has retweeted people who say they hope Donald Trump goes into jail and who's on team DeSantis. Mark Levin cannot be trusted. Why isn't he telling people to donate to President Trump instead? Because he's a Trump hater who works for Fox News, which we all know is backing DeSantis. Mark Levin is working against Donald Trump. See, this is the thing, because Mm. like you and Steve and other people think he's such a brilliant, like you talked about how he can pardon himself. He could be totally misleading Trump. Trump has to be really careful. And you know he's advising him. This is one of – and and it's not Trump's fault. It is so hard to find – my head would be spinning if I was him. It is so hard to figure out who you can and cannot trust. I mean you got people in 10 different directions telling you different things, and you don't know who's working for you or against you. Well, this thing with Mark Levin, Mark Mark Levin – was a never Trumper in the first campaign and never tr- trust a never Trumper. You've I always, always tell you this, said that. Never tr- and You've we've, we've seen that. this happen with Candace Owens. We've seen this happen with, you know, with, with uh, other people. So I, I don't trust Mark Levin. And um, that's the, and, and so far Look as that tweet he tweeted. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me, I'll get that in a second. So as, as far as what Laura Loomer is saying about Mark Levin, Mark Levin, I saw this this morning and I wasn't too happy about it. He he um, uh, tweeted Jenna Ellis's crowdfunding campaign, you know, in her for her legal fight because she's getting arrested and yep. you know, and and um, that's in highly Fulton County suspicious. But everyone knows she's been promoting DeSantis for months. That's what we were talking about and on yesterday. Show. Trump on mm-hmm. top of it. So I I was very surprised that Mark Levin posted the fundraiser for you uh, and Jenna Laura Ellis. Loomer are. The only and Mar- maybe Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates are probably the only two people I can think of that in Steve Kane that can that Trump can truly trust that I can think of and you know through people I know and stuff or have ta- heard about. But you know Laura Loomer definitely is on Team Trump and she's really good because she is. You guys got to follow her on Twitter. She is exposing things. That a lot of people, I didn't know that he was promoting Jenna Ellis's. Yeah, I saw that. GoFundMe this yeah. to raise money. That tells you right there. Yeah. You go by people's actions, do not their words. Yeah. Okay. You go by what they do, not what they say. Mm-hmm. And this action right here tells you exactly where his heart is and mm-hmm. where his loyalties lie. And they're not with Donald Trump. And if he and, and and I don't trust Dick Morris either. Dick Morris is a Clintonite guy. He's a Democrat. He's got all these. He's got all these lawyers advising him mm-hmm. that are either Democrats or for Desantis. So that scares me. What about the lawyers on his team? 
you know, where are their loyalties? The, the only, this is. It's uh, scary. The all, except for Jenna Ellis. Okay. I'm removing her from, I'm a, yeah. from what I'm about to say. The only lawyers he can trust are the ones that are getting arrested with him next week, <laughs> except for Jenna Ellis. And Giuliani. Because all the ones that are loyal to him, they're arresting. You know, this, this is true. Now, I saw Crazy. this, this uh, article when I was looking over Media I yeah. They got another article. I'm not going to read the article, but just the headline. Um, uh, remember, they're liberal, right? America needs to come to terms with the real possibility that former President Trump goes to jail. And um, – I, I kind of think – I think people are expe- expecting that, don't you, Kathy? Like pe- I, I think we're expecting, based on uh, some of the things people are saying, that there is a good chance that they put him in a jail cell maybe next, next week. Next week, you think? They might. And um, <clears throat> I, I think that the only Americans when it comes to Trump that I care about are the ones that are going to vote for him, the MAGA people right now. But I think that when – if if they were to put him in jail, obviously a lot of stupid Democrats would be throwing keg parties. But I think a lot of people that typically vote Democrat would have it would have an opposite effect. Uh, you know, m- m- the people that are Democrats that you would see jumping for joy are stupid people or activists, celebrities. Yeah, the celebrities. But I think a lot of average day Americans who are Democrats view themselves as civil libertarians and things, even though they're not because they're tyrants. But but. I think if they saw Trump arrested in a jail cell, I think a lot of Democrats would be disgusted by it. Not as not, you know, I'm not saying most, very few, but but a lot of them would be. But I, I think MAGA Republicans, I think we're kind of expecting him at some point to be put in a jail cell, even if it's a holding cell. Yeah, you, you understand what I mean? And and the in these other indictments, they missed that opportunity with Trump. And I think that bugs the daylights out of them. And I believe they're planning on at least getting him in a, in a holding cell in uh, in Georgia next week. You you might think I'm crazy, but I think Trump wants a mugshot. It will be, and this is why, it will be the most famous photograph in American history. Oh, a president mugshot? Yeah. The most famous oh, from, yeah. from now until the end of time. Oh, yeah. To the beginning of our country. It will be the most famous photograph ever this country has ever had. And I'm not kidding. Yeah. Um, It'll be (laughs) as famous as the Mona Lisa, if not more so. It'll be reproduced a million times over, T-shirts, mugs, everything. Um, And uh, nothing wrong with that. And I think Trump, I'm not saying excited about it, but I don't think he would mind that, honestly. And also... I think if that happens, which it will, I really believe that they're going to get it. I think it will put a visual to this absurdity and people will see that, especially people that are kind of on the fence or even Democrats, and it'll become so real to them now. And they'll realize this is not good for America. This is bad. Yeah. You're only going to have the hardcore left-wing kooks that are going to think this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I think Trump almost welcomes it. Um, because uh, it will be, like I said, the most famous picture ever taken in the history of this country from now to the end of time. Well, really, but I mean, a president's I, mugshot I'm not, is crazy. I'm not looking forward to that. What do you think? Because, uh, well, yeah, that's true. But but th- President Trump getting a mugshot can go one of two ways. Right. It can be the beginning of the greatest period in America because it'll – It'll le- it'll be the beginning of his return to the White House. I think so. And when President Trump comes back into the White House in 2024, he'll have his second term, a yep. non consecutive term. Through all, uh, 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 I'm going to say, you guys don't hear me use too much profanity. It, it, with all the shit that he's going through yeah. right now, there's and, no other. And then word. he walks into the White House. You know, he's going to have a mandate. Like no president ever has, and and he's going to clean house. The swamp is going to get drained, like in it almost immediately. But if he did not return to the White House, the mugshot would would symbolize the beginning of the end you of America so? as the leader of the free world. Because in either case, it will because, be the most well profound, well, this famous is, photograph listen, ever taken. When it comes to all this foreign aid and crap that we're always spending, anytime we go to stop all this foreign aid to these corrupt dictators around, the yeah. Life, 
you hear the the you know and when the debt ceiling comes up you hear the liberals always say the good faith and credit of the united states is very important we can't lose the good faith and credit of the united that's financial it's some bs they say but a president of the united states being put in prison by his opponent joe biden because that's what's going on here okay if that were successful, yeah. what does it do to our good faith and credit as the leader of the free world and as a great democracy and everything yeah. else? That's all gone. So if they're successful, the mugshot is symbolism of the end of the – it's it's like the fall of the Roman Empire. That would be the fall of America as we know it the if thing, they were successful. All I know is with Trump, the rule – it's a whole new ball game. It's hard to predict these things because every day it's something new and Trump just plays on a whole other level. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he's afraid of a mugshot. I, I, like I said, I, I, I'm not saying he's happy I'm about it, it. I'm expecting but, it. But I think, I think he almost welcomes it in some weird way because, um, because of, the, because of the, the fame of it and, the, and that image is just going to be, mm-hmm. like I said, the most famous image ever, and it will be a picture of him, a president mug, presidential mugshot. Never happened in the history. It might probably never happen again. And I think that does not fall short on Trump. You know, um, well, I wouldn't want that to be be his. Well, it, his no, but I'm. I, but do you understand knowing how he is? You don't agree with me well, at all that there's and, a part of him that likes that okay. notoriety in a way or that infamy. Well, I'll tell you in a way. I'm I I, I would like the mugshot in a way. Because when he comes back into the White House yeah. after they've arrested him right. and, and got a mugshot of him and he's back in the White House and defeated that, can you imagine the, the victory celebration we're going to have? Crazy. It's going to be. Now, those of you that are Patreon supporters, I want to thank all of you for your support. And those of you that don't know what Patreon is, you hear us on the podcast always thanking our Patreon supporters. Uh, it's it's a website you go to. It's similar to crowdfunding. It's a little different than crowdfunding, but it's a way for you to support the program by becoming a Patreon supporter. It means you're supporting the program, and there are benefits and perks to being a Patreon supporter. Among them are uh, you get access to commercial-free editions of each and every podcast episode that are uploaded to Patreon supporters commercial-free every episode. Uh, there's a lot of exclusive content on the Patreon page. The Patreon page, it it kind of looks like Facebook the way it's set up, but it's our own private group. It's not Facebook, yeah. but it's our own private group of people that are supporting the program through as Patreon supporters. And Kathy and I post a lot of content up there, both of us do, that is exclusive to Patreon supporters. Yep. We occasionally do Patreon-only podcast episodes as well as upload regularly, both of us, all kinds of content, including videos. Our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout-out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Mike P, Rome, Wisconsin, Macho, Wesley, Nick, Rick, Melissa, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox, Heather, David, and Richard. These are our top Patreon supporters. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter and be a part of that community that we have, there's a link in the episode description of this episode and every episode of the program. And there's also a direct link on my website, BrianCraigShow.com. We'll be right back with the final segment of today's show after this. Brian Craig here, telling you about our fifth annual listener cruise. And you're all invited, except Liberal Al. Liberal Al, you're not invited. But the rest of you are. We leave April 27th on board the Celebrity Beyond, the flagship of Celebrity Cruises. We're going to the ABC Islands, Curacao, Bonaire, and Aruba. We have shore excursions at every port, and I'll be on them all with you. We'll have dinner together every night, private cocktail parties. We'll go to Broadway shows together and dance till the clubs close every Every night, call Ian at Cruise and Travel Depot and book your reservation. 561-244-5779. 561-244-5779. 
Hey, good morning, Brian. It's Lisa, and my husband and I received our My Pillow 2.0 that we ordered with Kane the other day to buy one get one free. And they're our first My Pillows, and we love them. We absolutely love them. They're just absolutely marvelous. Yeah, I'm so glad. I got slippers on the way too. Go to mypillow.com and use our promo code Kane at checkout. K A N E, and buy your My Pillow 2.0 right now. Buy one get one free. You can also order by phone, toll free, eight hundred seven. 716-4879 1-800-716-4879 Promo code Kane. From author Gary L. Bausch comes the inspiring book, Never Waste a Perfectly Good Terminal Disease. Available on Amazon. This heartfelt book uplifts individuals facing the challenges of Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS and anyone dealing with a serious, incurable illness or debilitating condition. Filled with hope and encouragement, it guides readers to embrace practical daily living with joy and cherish the present moment. By emphasizing the strength of faith, the book shows that hope can triumph over personal power when dealing with severe disease. Living under the protective wing of God's strength, assurance, and hope. Find fulfillment and purpose even in the face of adversity. Order your copy of Never Waste a Perfectly Good Terminal Disease from author Gary L. Bausch on Amazon and discover a beacon of hope and strength for those facing life's greatest challenges. Step into the exciting world of boxing history with the book, Rivals in the Ring, 15 Greatest Boxing Rivalries of All Time, from author Andrew Dalziel, available on Amazon. In Rivals in the Ring, witness the fierce intensity and emotional drama that defined boxing's most legendary rivalries. You'll feel the adrenaline as these titans clashed, both in and out of the ring, leaving nothing but pure passion in their wake. You'll learn about the harsh realities of boxing. Some battles led to life-changing injuries and tragedy losses, reminding us of the sacrifices these warriors made in the name of greatness. When you read Rivals in the Ring, you'll embrace the evolution of boxing as it intersects with medical advancements, ensuring the safety and well-being of today's fighters. This must-read book sheds light on the sport's transformation and its impact on the lives of fighters. Rivals in the Ring uncovers some of boxing's most noble moments over the past 120 years, while also tackling the challenging aspects that test boxing's integrity. What are your copy right now? On Amazon, Rivals in the Ring, 15 Greatest Boxing Rivalries of All Time. From author Andrew Dalziel. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Uh, you you put a poll up on my YouTube community page? Yes. Um, well, real quick, I wanted to go over the latest interactive poll, which is at Twitter, at IA Polls 2022, but it's they update it all the time. Yeah. Has Trump at 60%, Ramaswamy at 13 and DeSantis at 8 So yeah. that has definitely shifted. Okay, so we did a poll. Um, a couple days ago. On my YouTube On community. your YouTube community page. It's had 5,800 votes. And somebody said it was a stupid question to you. I put up the polls. So if you think it's a stupid question, you're addressing me, which is fine. Yeah, I don't do the polls, Kathy. I do the, the polls. polls. So it's okay if it's – I don't mind putting up stupid questions. That's kind of the point sometimes. Kathy's a moderator on my YouTube channel. So Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's a stupid question, but it got 5,800 votes. I don't even know what the question is. If all the DAs agreed to drop the charges against Trump, if he dropped out of the race, should he take that deal? And 5,800 people 5, responded? 5,800 people my, so far have voted. We had 141 comments, one of them telling me how stupid the question is, but that's okay. Kathy, before you give the results, yeah. I want you guys to understand something. <laughs> this is uh, a poll that Kathy made on my, on my YouTube channel, okay? There are more people responding to my poll yeah. that you put up – well, your poll that you put up on my YouTube channel – than are polled in most of these national polls That's right. that you hear on CNN and Fox. Okay, so the result is so the question is if if all the D, if if, if all they these all charges agreed were to dropped, drop the charges if Trump dropped out of the race a plea bargain politics what well, should he take that deal? Yeah. So the answer was the choice is definitely take the deal or hell no. Okay. So what do you think the breakdown was? I really don't know. I, I have no idea. 97% said, hell no, do not take the deal. And 3% said, take it. Three. Who are these 3%ers? I don't know, but that I didn't think it'd be that big I'm of a stretch. I'm with the 97. 
Yeah, I mean, it. I agree with you, but that is, I thought it'd be a little little bit closer together, but that is pretty definitive right there. Almost wow. 6,000 votes. That's amazing. So that is... <laughs> that is amazing that's, right that's, there. Definitely yeah. don't take any deal. Well, Trump said he won't take a deal because he said that it, that's admitting he did something wrong. Why should he take a deal? He's exactly. an innocent man. He's a, he's a completely innocent man. Well, people do that all the time to avoid jail, but Trump's he's a different kind of guy. I can't believe how many people voted in that poll on my YouTube channel. That's crazy. Check it off in the community section. We put polls up all the time. Yeah. Now, I, there was an article this morning on the Gateway Pundit, and it's very, very upsetting, this article. And it's about one of the January 6th prisoners, and oh, yes. some photographs have come out. I'm going to read through this article in the Gateway Pundit. And I, the, he, this January 6th prisoner is in a cell with no mattress. He's got kind of like a, a cheap YMCA yoga mat, and the room that he is in is the size of a public bathroom toilet stall, basically. Yeah, that's basically the size. There's no toilet in there. There's a bucket It's for actually to use. smaller. It's about three feet wide and about six feet deep. Yeah, and he has to use, they got a yellow mop bucket that he uses to go to the bathroom. There's not even a toilet in here. Let me read through. This is really upsetting. Is. Uh, the, his name is Ryan Samsell, okay? S-A-M-S-E-L, Ryan Samsell. Here's the headline. This is the Gateway Pundit. It's awful. They, they say a national disgrace, and I agree. Um, photos leaked of horrific January 6th prisoner abuse, tortured, held five months in isolation in a closet room with a light on. I guess I got the light on all the time. And a mm. bucket for a toilet. Where's the ACLU, Amnesty International, or Human uh, Rights Watch? During his two and a half years without a trial, which I didn't even think was legal, you know, they're treating these guys like the Guantanamo guys. You understand yeah. that? Where they don't have— Probably worse. They're, they're, being, they're being treated— Well, what I mean is their rights. The, the reason that the Guantanamo prisoners, the al-Qaeda, were held there is because it's not U.S. soil, so they don't have all the constitutional rights because uh, it's in Cuba— the constitutional rights you would have here. That if don't they, you have the right to a speedy trial? Well, I that, thought yeah. you had that right. So, so they didn't want to try a lot of these Al-Qaeda guys, so they yeah. didn't bring them to the United States. They keep them at Guantanamo in Cuba. Right. But they're treating these Americans from January 6th like that. They're, they're preventing them from their constitutional right to a, to a speedy trial. Let me, let me just read through this. During his two and a half years without trial, Ryan has been moved around to 17 different facilities. He's been beaten, abused, tortured, and neglected since his arrest in January 2021. Earlier this week, the Gateway Pundit received these exclusive photos from his prison cell at the Federal Detention Center in Philadelphia. The cell is the size of a closet with a light on all the time. The cell had a, th a, bl a thin blue mattress, no sheets, no blankets, no clothing. He just has a pair of shorts on, no socks, no shoes. That's awful. It looks ice cold, no blankets. And he was kept there for five months straight. The photos are just shocking that this is taking place in yeah. America today, they write. Yeah. Um, Ryan told the Gateway Pundit this I was kept in a hard cell, and in that particular cell, five to six months. Yeah, this is, this is crazy. He told a judge what was happening. Uh, I mean, this is just, it's, when you go, I, I tweeted this story, so you can go on my Twitter. And I'd like to find know what it. he exactly was arrested for and what. They don't he, tell us in this article. What actually happened on January 6th with this guy in it particular. Doesn't, it doesn't say in this article, yeah. but it doesn't matter. If, yeah, if, this, if this guy, you know, it, it's, you, this is America, all right? You have a right to a speedy trial, and, pe and, and prisoners have rights to some common treatment, even in prison, especially someone that's not been convicted. Remember, you're in. You're presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. He hasn't he hasn't had the trial yet, so he's a he is under the eyes of the law and our he constitution. He should not even be detained and, right uh, now. An innocent man. Yeah. So you, you've got an American citizen in the United States that they're treating this way. I don't care what he did on January sixth. That's not how you treat Americans in prison. No, I'm saying I'm sure it's I'm sure what whatever he's accused of is probably not what happened and it's probably nothing. I don't know what he's accused you know, of. I'm or not what? saying we need to know to justify his yeah. imprisonment. I'm saying we need to know because it's because they're probably not telling you because it's probably nothing that you would be detained for like this. I mean, he probably just walked through the building 
uh, like uh, like hundreds know. of other people. You but know, it, there's no video of this guy doing anything. I don't bad. know. I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything That's about really the guy. Awful. I, I've not heard his name until I read this story today. Trump should part of his platform. I know he's mentioned it. A little bit should be to release all of them, to to pardon pardon them them all, and I think he will do that. He said he didn't say he's never said all. He said he said many or most. I've heard that he'll look at it. He'll say he said pardon many or most. He's never said all. Well, if Jimmy Carter can pardon the people that that fled during Vietnam, uh, then he can pardon these people. Well, some of the people might be undercover Democrats that were fake MAGA on January Mm -hmm. 6th and some of these cells too. So you don't want to say all of. But it, when those he, guys won't be in cells. When you go and watch that cell that this January 6th prisoner is in in Philadelphia, it, it, to me, you know what it looks like? And I'm not exaggerating. It, you can either go to the Gateway Pundit or my Twitter and, and see the article and the pictures. I don't believe this is an exaggeration. I think he looks like he's in the Hanoi Hilton during the Vietnam War. Yeah, no, that's exactly that's, what it I looks mean, like. he's being held like yeah, that. I think you're exactly right. Like, you know, yeah, like, yeah. I, I think that's exactly what's going on. It it's, looks like it to me. It's, Very inhumane conditions. It's really sad. And uh, the reason I, I brought this story up at this point during the show is it's so sad and depressing. I didn't want to start the show with it. And you know, it said it's in the just, article he's depressed. been moved seventeen times. What is that about? Why does he keep getting shuffled around? Are there that many corrupt judges that won't let this guy out of jail my, until his trial? My I mean, guess, they let they let people in New York. Uh, I've I saw a thing where a girl killed her father a couple months ago. She admitted to it. Does she, he, she was pissed at him because yeah. he wouldn't let her go somewhere. The judge let her go. Yeah. Like it's 20, they're letting murderers go. And Alec Baldwin killed a woman. Insane. Well, my guess would be on moving him around 17 times, probably a variety of a couple of reasons. Yeah. One, they, they don't want the press or family to know where they are at. So they, they're not in communication with people on the oh, outside. Maybe. And another one is probably a way to drag out not giving somebody their speedy trial. I think that's what By it is. all this weird processing. There all over might the place. be. A time limit in certain fac- – I think that's what yeah. it is, that they're, they're manipulating the system. and they're manipulating the system. Yeah. But why this guy? Are they doing it for a lot of people? Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. I can't imagine his con- – who is his congressman? I don't know anything about Could this guy, liberal. Kathy. I don't know. You're asking me all these questions, but I, I don't know the answers to them. This, but I do okay, – this, but, this but is all I know. This is, into it, this is what I know. And this is – all. and I, the, the reason I don't know these other things is because they're not important. This guy – this is what I know, okay? He's an American citizen, yes. and his constitutional right to a speedy trial has been violated. Two and a half years, no trial. He, uh, he and his attorneys are claiming beatings and other abuses taking place. Yeah. This is not how you treat anyone in America yeah. in prison. I don't care what they've done, especially prior to a trial. This guy has not been tried yet, so he's presumed innocent under the Constitution. Right. So all these other things— you, you don't need to know about because they're not important to this. But I would like you guys go to the Gateway Pundit or my Twitter and look at the pictures of this guy. Yes. And let me know if it looks like someone in the Hanoi Hilton because I, I believe it right. does. I think it does. Yeah. Um, well, on that note, because uh, I'm depressed, I mean, I, I just – what can you talk about after this? I mean, it's just so upsetting. Um but that's it for us today. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time.